Today on Real Life, Dave and Billy Jouse from the Pittsburgh Pirates, the baseball coach and his wife talk about their destinies beyond the dugout. Plus, do you suffer from stomach issues and you can't understand why? Well, the Sherwoods break down what's causing irritation in your belly. All that and so much more right now on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you. And the Bible is your and my guide to abundant life. I'm your host, Don Black. I'm here with my beautiful bride, Terry. Thank you. You know, on this day that I'm excited about this whole week, Terry, because we're going to be highlighting the 70s. Oh, right. That's just the so, 70s. When, when I was just a child. Yeah, you weren't here. She was, <laughs> she was a youngin. But, I was a youngin who was in high school. Do you remember? Now, if some of mm -hmm. you guys can relate to this. Did you come out of the Jesus people uh, era? Is that where your roots are? That's where my roots are. I came to know the Lord in that, in that season. The mighty move of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to show you some stuff. I'm excited about what we're doing this week. So I'm going to let you hold on to that just for a minute. Mm -hmm. We had a big event up here. That's right. Big. Outside. And the weather was awesome. First time ever on Cornerstone Mountain, we invited some of our partners to come up for a shindig, a, a little shindig picnic. Outside. A little picnic. We had great, Babby Mason was here, Jubilee sang, Dawn Terry spoke. Black was here. Hey, a lot of all of us were here <laughs> to celebrate CTVN's 38th, 38th anniversary. Birthday. That's awesome. exciting. We got a little video to show you. Yeah. Cornerstone Television is celebrating 38 years of broadcast ministry. 300 of our partners came together on Cornerstone Mountain to praise God for how the station has spread the gospel across the airwaves. We can get into New York full time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for $20,000 a month. Not a day, not an hour. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's what I'm saying, guys. I, I think that we have an opportunity to go to Philadelphia and bring the gospel into Philadelphia. And I need you guys to pray about helping us with this. During the event, our Cornerstone family shared how the network has touched their lives. Uh, God has used Cornerstone in many ways in my life. But last night, while I was watching Real Life, Pastor Gary said somebody had a stroke many years ago and has a problem with his right arm and right hand. And all of a sudden, I lifted my arm like he said to, and I could feel a strength coming back into my arm. And this morning, normally when I need something open, I'd give it to my wife to open. Well, she was having problems opening something this morning, and I was able to open it. Babby Mason and Jubilee led the crowd in a powerful time of worship. I heard that you were hurting, that you were suffering pain. And as the event drew to a close, Don Black led a prayer over the city of Pittsburgh. Father, we point our hands towards the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Father, we thank you for the power of your spirit that's moving all through this area, God, in supernatural ways, God. To all of our donors, thank you for partnering with us to raise high his signal to the nations. It's so fun to have partners come together. That's right. That's right. And we also, again, want to say thank you. And for those who weren't able to make it, we just thank you all, partners, yes, for do. your support and your prayers. We couldn't do it without you. And what God's doing, and as I mentioned in that little clip, God's opening new doors for the mm -hmm. programs to go off into new areas. We have an opportunity to be in New York City 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we're this close to being able to push, pull the trigger on getting this program, not just this program, but all of Cornerstone, into, into almost two and a half million homes. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're at, pushing the gospel out as fast as we can to as many people as we can in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
That's right. That's what Cornerstone's all about. Thank you for being our partner. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming up. Some, some were able to come, some were not able to come. Mm -hmm. we, speaking of coming, this Friday, That's right. this Friday, we're having a concert that goes back to the, to the days of the <laughs> Jesus people. In fact, That's we're right. calling it our Jesus People Festival. Well, are you able to say who's going to be here? Yeah, we sure, okay. sure, sure. Let's do it. Well, you want to do it? Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Honey Tree. I don't know if you all remember, remember her. Honey tree? I remember Honey Tree. You can rattle and shake me. No, oh, wow, you're singing. <laughs> oh, look ah, at I'm taking all of Ter Terry's role. <laughs> But Honey she tree? was known for the long braids and yeah, the, you know and the her, bell you know bottoms. If you don't know her, you don't know her. That's She's right. a wonderful, godly and woman. And we also and have one of my favorite from today, and still mm -hmm. one of my favorite. Randy Stonehill is going to be with us That's here on awesome. the mountain, and he is uh, one of the perennials of Christian rock and roll. Mm -hmm. One of the very, very first guys who used rock and roll music to communicate the gospel okay. of Jesus. Okay, sing one of his songs now. Um, I, 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 you know, I got one song in me myself. <laughs> <laughs> don't, 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 don't push me. And, okay. and we're going to invite you to come up. The free concert, free That's event. Right. We don't know how many people will be able to be on the mountain with us. We're, gonna take, we're, we're taking it by faith. Go to SignalHillStage.com mm -hmm. and reserve your seat. Hey, we're selling popcorn. SignalHillStage.com. Not selling. And you can popcorn. reserve your seat and be part of this event. We're doing these all summer long. This is our first one in the summer series. That's right. Because we're up on this beautiful mountain. If you've never been here, you don't know. We overlook the city of Pittsburgh in the mm -hmm. far distance. And we just know that God has given us this mountain. And we want to we want to share it with you. It's a special place. We we believe it's holy ground. Well, other than you heard it, we're having popcorn there. <laughs> but I want you to know you have to bring your own chair. Yeah. It's just like a concert out yeah. in the lawn. You can bring uh, your chairs, your blankets. And it's just going to be a nice, fun time to enjoy music but also make new friends and reconnect with old ones. Jesus people, here we come. Mm -hmm. You know, God's working all around us. We see it every day on this program. Let's see what Sydney's found in the news. An Illinois school is under fire for banning an eighth grader's faith-based graduation speech. Seth Clark is a salutatorian at Atkin Grade School in Franklin County. His speech included Bible verses and a prayer, but the school blocked him from doing it. The school superintendent released a statement saying Seth's beliefs are respected but couldn't be part of the graduation. When a friend of Seth's family heard about the ban, he allowed him to share a speech on his property. A group of Seth's friends and supporters came out to hear him speak. One of Seth's supporters told WSIL-TV he felt the school shouldn't deny a student the right to share what's on their heart. We will welcome Amy here. Hi. Isn't that, as ter isn't that terrible that they wouldn't let a young man share from his faith at, and, and a graduation ceremony? I know, and it really hits home because I have a middle schooler. And just, just to think of all of it, that it took in that young man to stand up for his yeah. faith, yeah. to ride it, and then to be denied by the school, right. his freedom of speech and belief, it, it, yeah, it, to me, it's kind of like a, a punch in the gut, right. but it's going to make him stronger. Mm -hmm. And it's going to bring some things out in the school district Good. with the school board, right? And, and hopefully Christians will stand up. Well, well yeah. They selected yeah. him as a salutatorian, correct? I say that uh, right? One Sal of those. One of those. Yeah. So he was selected by his teachers and so mm -hmm. forth. So by that being selected, that should allow him to have the opportunity to share mm -hmm. what's on his heart. Yeah. Well, but I want to say welcome back to Amy. We haven't yeah. had her for a while. Yeah. Amy's you know, been, we, yeah. we keep telling while. people you're in, you're, you're in training, you're in conferences. <laughs> yeah, I know. I am getting so much training. <laughs> smart. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> well, and congratulations to 20 years. Yes. Thank that you. That is so awesome. Oh, well, we need to say what 20 years is about. So We were, we were privileged, Terry and I went to uh, Amy and Buck's 20th anniversary for their church and Grace Life Church in Monroeville, it just was an awesome, it was at Stage A&E. Stage A&E, &E. Stage right. E, right downtown, right by Heinz Field and PNC Park, mm -hmm. and it was phenomenal. But I, in this really weird way, I feel like we're just getting started. Oh, like wow. there's, there's a freshness and a, an, an enthusiasm to reach more people, to get the next generation really involved. They're the ones that's going to be carrying the church. So it's, it's just an exciting time. Yeah. It's a very exciting time. Mm -hmm. And speaking of exciting times, a little bird whispered into my ear yeah. that this is your birthday. <gasps> Today is my birthday. <laughs> the birthday girl. 
Yay. Happy birthday Yay. to you. Yeah, yeah. Karen, the audience Karen. respond. Yeah. <laughs> push, push the applause oh, button. Yeah. There we go. What? Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna do that. Let's do that towards the end of the program. Yeah. Oh, so we get some, we'll get some yeah, yeah. more voices oh. out here. That's right. Because yeah, you don't want me not... and Terry singing this. But, yeah, but it's exciting. You know, birthdays harmony. seem to be coming faster. Do you notice that? They just seem to be. The pace is a little quickened. And my mom and dad kind of really did me a disservice. They made a big deal out of my birthdays. <laughs> so Buck says, like, the whole month is my birthday. Oh, <laughs> and anything good that happens, it was like, because it was my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when our kids were, I don't know, even still, we celebrate not only their birthday, yes. but we celebrate their half birthday. No. Yes. Are you serious? Yeah. I had a do. lot of work. Well, no, it was just like a special treat. It wasn't okay. like they didn't get presents, but they could get a meal I of their choice that. or a special treat to celebrate. But, you know, I have to say, as they've gotten older, like 24, 25, we really, I just say, happy half birthday. That's about <laughs> that's it. it. That's, that's not it. quite right. That's, that's, that's not quite right. <laughs> now they're lobbying point. for quarter birthdays. Oh, I think that maybe a quarter birthday might be appropriate. No, yeah. Uh, hey, now, you, you're too young. Both of you ladies are too young to remember the Jesus People Movement. Yes, it's kind of a, maybe a faint thing, yeah. but there was a move of the Holy Spirit that started in the late 60s mm -hmm. and moved across the nation and just took the college campuses by storm. Mm -hmm. I mean awesome. to tell you, I, and I was privileged to be part of that. The Holy Spirit swept me up into that. That's where we started moving in the gifts of the Spirit. That was kind of the point of the Jesus People Movement, that charismatic renewal was in specifically in tongues and interpretation of tongues. That was the kind of the centerpiece of it all. Mm -hmm. But I was at, I got to go to Dallas, Texas to yeah. at the uh, Cotton Bowl in 1972 <gasps> for Expo 72. Anybody, anybody remember oh, that? Awesome. Over 200,000 Christians. They, they called it the Christian Woodstock. Oh, wow. Billy, Billy Graham was there as was wow. a whole. Johnny Cash? Johnny Cash I thought was I there. saw a picture of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so all of that, that's one event out of many, 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 many. All the festivals came out of the Jesus People right? movement. Yeah. All the music that really set contemporary Christian music in place I remember, started there. I remember seeing Larry Norman when I was like just a young in, in the 70s and I thought wow look at this guy he's talking about Jesus and he has long hair <laughs> it's rock and roll I mean that was like a big thing back then because yeah. there really wasn't rock and roll Christian rock and roll it came out of the 70s well, right? I know a lot of you folks wow. that are watching some of the family you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about because we do our living room concert series and many 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 people watch that it turns into one of our most watched events so we're excited to be able to offer this event on Friday again mark your calendar bring your lawn chair come up it starts at uh, seven o'clock right you probably want to get around six and just hang out mm -hmm. and listen listen to the to the Honey Tree and then in the uh, Randy Stonehill and we've got tape from uh, Phil Keggy and we got tape from uh, from Love Song Chuck from Chuck Gerard. Gerard. Hey, clean before my Lord I stand. That's a Honey Tree song. Yeah, got one tree. on them. There that we go. <laughs> uh, Amy, what's coming up next? Uh, still to come. We're gonna keep the laughing going. Keeping love alive after kids. The Mom Talk ladies share how to stay connected to your husband. Right after the break, Dave and Billy Jouse talk about what the future holds for their unique ministries. We'll be right back. When I lost my job, our bills kept coming faster than we could pay them. My wife and I feel like we were drowning, that there was no way to be free. My addiction became worse and worse until one day my wife found me on the floor. I need hope. I wish I could feel joy again. I've become so negative. Every day our prayer partners take calls from hurting people. We're working in God's harvest field 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Will you join us in this kingdom work? When you become a harvest partner, we're gonna send you our Turning the Tide teaching on DVD, two CD set, and a study guide. This is a powerful teaching to help turn the tide in your life. We'll send it along with our beautiful harvest partner mug. This is our gift to you, call now. One of the things about having partners come up on the mountain mm -hmm. and be able to fellowship together and share a meal together, 
was exciting because you get to see faces of people. Right. Yeah, that's right. You know, and, and get to kind of hear their personal stories. That's right. That's, yes. the, that's the weird thing about TV is because TV people watch mm -hmm. and, and they feel like they know you really right. well because they watch you. But it's good for us to be able to That's meet true. you. That's right. And, you know, I got to meet um, some partners that have been partners for 38 I years. Know. They were there um, when um, Norma and Russ, they, what? Took a shovel and groundbreaking. groundbreaking, yeah. So that's really awesome, and that just was, uh, you know, it was just so encouraging to hear of their commitment and their support, and just to hear stories from the past because we hadn't been there. You know, we've well, only been here about four or five years, so it's great to hear where it all began. Well, and, and we invite you mm -hmm. to join us in our family because we we have family members that have been, like Terry said, 38 years. But then new people were joining all the time. And you say, what is a, what is the Cornerstone Partner? Mm -hmm. That's somebody who joins together with us in two ways. One is in your prayers. You pray with us and you join a prayer team. And two is you help us financially. Because it, it, there's a financial commitment that's made for us to go out and go to new places and broadcast. And God's faithful. You know, he always opens mm -hmm. doors. Right. He always provides for that. But he works through people. That's how God works. He works through people. The Lord could just send resources to you through a, a bird. He did it. Jesus threw a fish one time. But that's not how he typically does it. Typically, God works through people. Mm -hmm. He'll work through a job. He'll work through people who are in your life. That's how God works in ministry. So we are, thank you for being our partner. Thank you for helping us. And, mm -hmm. and pray about becoming a partner with Cornerstone. Amen. Just stand with us as we mm -hmm. take the gospel out. These days are very, very, very that's important right. days. Mm -hmm. We're in the last days of this age, and I want us to push forward as hard and as fast as we can. Call us at 888-665-4483. See, as what you're talking about, tr transition. You're talking about a partner who's been with us 38 right. years, yeah. and God's transitioning to another generation mm -hmm. then another ge until he comes back. That's right. And Dave and Billy Joss, they are friends of our ministry, and we're so glad that they are part of the Cornerstone family. Dave's a coach with the Pirates, and Billy is a writer, she's a speaker. They use their platforms, they both have individual platforms, to communicate to people about the kingdom of God. Guys, welcome back to Yay. Real Life. Great so glad here. to have you here. Thank you for uh, having us again. I know in your world you never really have time off. <laughs> <laughs> probably, not probably during the season. Yeah, yeah. Not there is, there you're 24 7 the all the time, but we're, 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 we appreciate you coming yeah. and sharing with us. Mm -hmm. We're talking about transition. You know, how God takes you from one place and then he moves you to another place. Mm -hmm. And that's just part of his plan. Right. How have you guys experienced that? Well, recently our biggest transition has been getting into the empty nest. Our baby oh. boy went off to college two years ago. Wow. And um, that was huge. We had three boys and the other two had left earlier and Will was home for four years with, uh, with me mostly. <laughs> but <laughs> being in baseball, there's yeah. a transition of that too. Um, mm -hmm. But then in baseball, we have transitions through the season, getting into spring training, into the season. But in this empty nest, my transition has been to get to begin writing. Mm. And it was nothing that I ever dreamed of doing. I wasn't the little girl with the diaries and the journals. I was a critical care nurse out of college. And um, through that transition with Will going to school, I was really praying. Mm -hmm asking God, okay, God, what's next? And mm -hmm. went to church one Sunday and our pastor asked the question, what is God doing in and through you? Well, I'm a list maker. I started making the list of what is God doing in and through me? And when I looked back at that list, I thought, wow, I'm a really shallow Christian woman. It's all I am. Mm. I am reading my Bible. I am doing a Bible mm. study. I am serving in a soup kitchen. I am rather than what God was doing. And for me, that sent me on this really deep journey of trying to figure out what, it, why am I not feeling like God's working in and through me? Why am I not allowing him to? And that took me into writing more. I've been writing devotions for baseballchapel.org, which is a, an organization that gives services and Bible studies for mm -hmm. people in baseball. Their women's de devotions and men's devotions are available right. for anyone on the site. And I had been writing those, but I didn't consider myself a writer. And Looking back now, God had been calling me for about 12 years really? and it was wow. delayed obedience, which is disobedience. Thanks. And mm. when I finally said yes, mm. it's amazing where God has taken this journey. So from your experience of going through transition yourself and then taking this time to write again and so forth, what, what have you found in terms of, you said, what, 
you know, instead of the I am, it's what God is. What have you found? Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> I actually, at this point, the, the total fruition of this journey has been that I now have a book coming out in the spring oh, or, of next year, of okay. 2018, so about six, eight months away. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> this journey took me to a place of what had I put in my spirit, not horrible things, but what had I placed in the place that the Holy Spirit could be moving? And I call it a spiritual power washing, mm -hmm. that we need to clean out those crevices, those deep crevices of where we've stuffed stuff. Right. And you know, one of the examples I talk about is in October, what do I do? September, October, I become so obsessed with baseball and are we going to get in the playoffs and are we going to ah. make the playoffs and how are we doing and mm -hmm. our records and mm -hmm. you know, that I allow that time to take me away from growing deeper with God and, mm. and it's just taking those little things out of that place. Facebook, spending, you know, right. going on Facebook to look at one thing and you're there a half an hour that later scrolling happens. and scrolling. That's right. and it's so, so true. it's just, it brought me a more of an awareness of mm -hmm. what I was placing in the place of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and how I could replace that with time alone with God, mm. with reading my Bible in a, in a profound way rather than right. just doing it out of a checklist duty. Read my Bible today, did my 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. It was more of how can I connect deeper with Christ. Mm -hmm. Such an important lesson to learn to make that a personal journey Absolutely. instead of just this business kind of deal. But we're facing that same thing you guys faced. Yeah. Our baby is going to college this, this fall. Oh, right. wow. oh yeah. man. Thanks. I don't know though. I'm not sure it's <laughs> good for me. I, We're I, loving the empty it, nest. I love my kids, it's but. Not, do you really? <laughs> we yeah, love the empty nest. Was it, how hard was it to see him go? It, it was hard. Oh, hard to see him go. It was harder for her <laughs> yeah. because that was her job for, yeah. for right. 18 Mandatory years. Mandatory retirement yeah. when he went to college years. for me. Mm -hmm. And so, so she was. <laughs> it was. And Mandatory I've had to, I've had, we've had to tr transition from club to club sometimes by right. letting go, being let go or something, but I never had to transition my work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. when, when David had asked me, he goes, why are you having such a hard time? What, what is it? And we started talking about this two years before he left mm -hmm. because I had homeschooled him for mm -hmm. seven years. He went mm -hmm. to school for the first time in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. He was my baby. You know, there was a, a different um, commitment for me mm -hmm. with him and a different connection. And my older two are great. We homeschooled her a while, but they were older, more independent, more out there. And um, so I said to him, I go, think about if someone walked up to you and said, you can never do baseball the way you know it right now. You'll never be on the field again. Mm -hmm. You have to sit up at the top with the front office people never going down to the field. And front office people do go to the field, but okay. never again. Mm -hmm. How would that make you feel? And he goes, oh my gosh. Because as we transition as mothers, from being a mom with our kids at home, mm -hmm. the day they leave, your role changes. Right. And it Absolutely. does change from that mothering, hovering, even though I'm not a helicopter parent, you're still there, did you get mm -hmm. your shoes? Do you have your right. baseball gear? Mm -hmm. To a call or right. a, a guidance. You become a guiding hand That's in their true. life. It and mm -hmm. that is a hard transition, but we transition together in that we really purposefully made a point to pray mm -hmm. about it together, to really seek God in what is mm -hmm. next for us, and me not even knowing at that time that it was gonna be writing. Mm -hmm. And um, so we really, I think the communication's the biggest. Mm -hmm. And it was for us, even though we still have our own individual ways, but it was for us. Because yeah. mm -hmm. it, was, it was done individually a lot, other mm -hmm. than the off season, then we sure. found our home church at, at wherever we were living yeah. and we, did a lot of stuff together, but when we were apart, it was, we were finding our ways to, to serve, mm -hmm. but we found ways to serve together now yeah. that it's That's so a cool. married yeah. couple together awesome. with, well, that, with nobody else. Yeah. You know, guys, it's almost, you, our stories are almost exactly the same. They're almost exactly the same yeah. in, 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 in mirrors, at least mirrors, nothing's exactly the same, but mirrors in that regard because right. Terry has been like where you were full-time mom. I like what you just said, mandatory retirement. Mandatory retirement. <laughs> and it wasn't my, no choice at all. It was mandatory toll. This don't you feel it. that way? I, I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I have been sort of decompressing, realizing that, you know, he and our son and I, every morning we'd get up yeah. and we'd talk, we had breakfast and, you know, and I thought, oh, that's not going to happen. 
you know, and, um, you know, and with the other ones that have gone to college before him, yeah. I have an idea of what to expect, right. but yeah. the finality of it all is, is going to be there. There is a mm -hmm. mourning process mm -hmm. and there is a, it's a soulful mourning process because you're changing right. as a mom and a woman because you're, for me, it was even more drastic because we didn't spend six months a year together, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know. Oh, really? So when wow. I took Will to college in New York City and dropped him off, David had said, I don't want you going home alone. I don't want you going back to Pittsburgh alone. I want you to come on the road with me. Oh, so okay. I flew to St. Louis, I think yes. it was. And it was a mourning period. I felt my mm -hmm. soul mourning wow. that, and I had to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. And I had to really pray through it. and connect with God even on a deeper level of, okay, Lord, here I am, mm. take me, because I don't know who I am mm -hmm. without my kids. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm gonna do next, mm -hmm. take me. Yeah. And that just was part of that whole spiritual process. Right. It's amazing when you look back and you're like, wow, God, you're so good. Like you yeah. know what you're doing. Why do we question? Why do we ask if he's on the right track? Because it's amazing how he just pull, and I call it the push and pull. If we're pushing into something, it's not God's way. When we allow him to pull us, mm. that's when we're taken into the Amen. right places. That's, a good, that's such Amen. a good lesson. Yeah. And I, it's, it's just like when you say, hey, God, I need your help. He mm. is always faithful Absolutely. and to answer and to help during this time. Mm. I have a question about the pirates. <laughs> you go in, what do you think? Playoff? Absolutely. Every, every, year, every, year, every, year, every, every season, all the way, baby. World going all the series. way. Every season, you're going all the way. You know, I wish we had more time. <laughs> because, because I'd love to talk to you about how it changed your relationship, because it does. Mm -hmm. Terry and I have been trying to prepare for that. Right. You know, I've been the one kind of beating the drum because right. it changes, the dynamic yeah. changes when you're not daddy and mommy anymore, right. but you're father and mother. Right. If you understand that thing, Absolutely. perhaps we'll get you to come back and we'll talk about relationships. It's a new season yeah. of yeah. our lives that, that we are thriving in. And you're yeah. liking it. Oh, we're loving, loving it. it. I'm looking at it. I'm going, I don't know how that's yeah. going to work. We Even better friends than ever. It. And that's, I will say, work on a friendship because yeah. that is the base of your relationship at this point mm -hmm. is our friendship has really, because when you're friends, you tend to discuss things differently than in the husband and wife. I, it's just a little bit of a different communication. Right. Yeah, so I can't even imagine true. what you talk about if you don't talk about your kids. So, know. You know. And you still do, but in you a different do. light, and yeah. We, yeah. We, we enjoy other things and, and dive into other things. Yeah. But this process of going through changes is really the whole journey is like that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes, it is. Our whole journey is like that, and this is a, we've highest highlighted one section of the journey when we go from being active parents to being uh, disconnected in that regard but there's all these other things and many people watching are going through a process a journey and you're maybe transitioning from not working to to mm -hmm. being retired or from right. college to becoming an employed person there's these things and right. single to married I mean there's all kinds of transitions the, 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 what's the secret of transition? I'm going to let you guys end keep, with the... Keep him in the center That's of it. all that. Yeah. Keep and Jesus in the center. When, no doubt. And we, we've had problems center. before when, when, they, when he wasn't. Yeah. On yeah. Either our marriage or as our family or us individually. Mm -hmm. When he is, he has, he has a purpose for us. Well, you come back, let's talk relationships. Yes. Okay. We're looking Absolutely. forward to that. Let's, let's go to Amy. Wow, I can't even imagine that season right now where I'm an empty nester because right now I'm in elementary school, middle school, and high school with my children. And I just picture myself when they're all grown and gone out of the house, so excited that I made it and that they made it. But how many know that there are so many seasons in our lives and that God orchestrates all of them and that he's with us in all of the seasons of life. I love to use baseball analogies and how perfect for a Pittsburgh Pirates coach. You know, sometimes in life, in these seasons, we feel like we're kind of striking out, so to speak. We feel like we're kind of missing the mark and an and open uh, door of opportunity happens and we kind of strike out. Uh, we get a, a, a new relationship or, and we kind of strike out or, or we fall back into that addiction. We feel like we strike out. And what kind of God do we serve when we feel like we're striking out in life. Do you know that we serve a good God, a faithful God? Actually, it says in Psalm 145, the Lord is gracious, full of compassion, 
He is slow to anger and he is of great mercy. Unlike everybody else that's going to judge you and jump on you and get on you for when you fall short or you miss the mark, our God is slow to anger and he is of great mercy. Will you right now make the decision to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. It's the best decision you'll ever make. He's such a faithful, loving, good Father. Will you pray this prayer and say, Father God, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, will you give us a call at 888-665-665? 4483. Well, coming up, doctors Mark and Michelle Sherwood are talking about having stomach issues. Let's hear what helpful advice that they have to share with us today on Pathway to Your Healing. Hi, everyone, and hi, Dr. Michelle. Question for you. Does Joint and muscle pain, aches, and delayed recovery just mean you are getting old. Why do we accept these symptoms as signs of old age anyway? Instead, we need to evaluate the cause of what's causing that. Poor diet is the number one cause of inflammation. Living in accordance with the standard American diet, we call SAD, S-A-D, Sugars, grains, breads, refined flours, glutens, artificial sweeteners can lead to an unhealthy digestive tract. If you continue to live a life that is full of this kind of things, it's gonna catch up to you. At an early age, age should not be riddled with dis-ease, dis-ease. You see what happens, poor food choices, they injure the lining of our gut. Specifically, the lining of the small intestine takes the first hit. When the abuse becomes so great, the precious lining becomes weak and permeable. These poisons, they have direct access to our system now. This is a new term, it's called leaky gut. Leaky gut syndrome. When the intestinal line is injured, the immune system launches an attack. That attack is first local. It's called irritable bowel syndrome. Remember, the bowel doesn't have a voice. It becomes irritable. Next, if that gut becomes leaky, now we have systemic inflammation, leaving you with that unyielding pain and other symptoms, joint aches, pains, muscles, soreness, allowing you to want to reach for over-the-counter medications like Tylenol, Deep, Ibuprofens, Advils, Aleve, and these further injure the intestinal lining and other organs like your liver and your kidneys. There are a few things that you can do to eliminate this from happening. Number one, eliminate the waste and the trash from coming in. Change nutrition to fresh and raw. Fresh and raw fruits and vegetables. Also, the solution to pollution is dilution. Our bodies are 60% water. That means we need to get in plenty of clean water. And if we're taking those toxic things in, let's dilute the pollution with good clean water. Next, restore the gut or the small intestine lining. Many times a supplement called L-glutamine and even a probiotic will be a great start towards correction. We've got to retain these things for the long haul. We've got to eliminate that standard American diet, that SAD, SAD diet, eliminate it. We've got to put the good stuff back in. Probiotics, glutamine, and we have to retain it for the long haul. That means keeping these nutritional habits on day, on board, not just for a day, not just for a week, a month, a year, it's a lifetime. So don't be bound up with a lot of joint pains and aches, mistakenly thinking that you're just getting old. Perhaps we can correct it with just a little good nutrition, like these things back here, they're incredible. Real life family, we wanna encourage you to eat good clean foods. Keep the gut intact. Bring healing to your life 
and less aches and pains to your joints. You know, there's so much, he, they just said so much they in sure that did. very brief segment of time that it's important to us. Mm -hmm. The leaky gut syndrome is a new term, but permeated gut is not a new term. That's been a medical diagnosis for a long, long time. And, and I'm not going to go back to what they said, but the takeaway from that is that we have a lot of symptoms in our bodies and we write them off as being uh, joint arthritis and a lot right. of immune, uh, immune systems, autoimmune diseases that come out of our diet. They come out of the foods that we eat, the food, the way our body processes food. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the, the intestine is where you process the food. Mm -hmm. And when it breaks down like they're describing and it starts leaking into your, actually into your body, that becomes infectious. Wow. And, you know, don't you think, though, with what we're eating, you're saying, a lot of people think that they're eating okay and that they'll just take a pill and it makes it feel better. No, there's no pills that can take care yeah, of this. I mean, I'm just wondering about that. Well, we've got to go back to God's way. So okay. I would suggest we go back to the, the, to the natural way of eating, eat mm -hmm. raw foods, good foods, clean meats, right. and uh, get a lot of fiber, drink a lot of water, mm -hmm. get, go away from processed foods. Right. That's you know, true. the things we really like the most, the mm -hmm. cookies and the potato chips and all the processed foods. If you look at the back of the box, it's got all these words that you can't say, don't eat that that's stuff. Because right. that's, that's right. what goes in and starts breaking up yeah. your intestinal tract. Mm -hmm. And Amy, that's not where we want to be, especially if we want to age well and we right. want to get older and be healthy when we're older. Right, and it makes me aware even as my birthday is today, Happy just birthday. that you take care of your body in this That's temple. Right. It's like, I've got one shot at this. That's but true. someone once told me, and I love this advice, to go around the perimeter of the grocery store when <laughs> you're shopping, right. yeah. right. stay in the fresh vegetables, the meat, Absolutely. the dairy, and. All the middle part is the chips, the crackers, Absolutely. the breads, the processed yeah. foods, and just stay away from that. Although, you know, it sounds good to say, but I do love a good potato chip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, those, the, the, unfortunately, the best things to taste the best are the ones that hurt us the most. You know, wouldn't you, if you're going to eat, well, I shouldn't say that. If you're going to cheat, you want to cheat well, but you shouldn't cheat. Don't cheat. I'm sorry. Stop cheating. But I, I've been on several weight pro weight loss programs, and they all said to shop around the perimeter. So yeah. I agree with you on that. Too. Well, we're out of time for this, mm -hmm. but stay tuned. To, uh, with with real life, we're getting more and more involved in nutrition and health and exercise because yeah. it's so critical. That's you can't right. be healthy spiritually, Amy, right. if you're not healthy physically. It, right. they, they work hand in hand. They we're we're a three part being: a body, a soul, and a spirit. That's well, right. let's go see what Sydney's found in the good news. I'm Sydney Grant for Good News 360. Here's how the Holy Spirit is moving around the world. Thousands of Christians united in prayer, crying out for God's kingdom to come. The Church of England spearheaded a global prayer movement that took place between the Christian festivals of Ascension and Pentecost. Justin Weebly, the Archbishop of Canterbury, called on believers to spark a wave of prayer around the world. Weebly says the movement has the power to shift many of the major issues facing our world. The body of Christ in Europe is gearing up for Refugee Sunday. Congregations across the continent plan to hold special services for migrants. Services will focus on the needs of millions of refugees who have arrived in Europe. The European Evangelicalist Alliance, along with the Refugee Highway Partnership, are working with churches for the event. Refugee Sunday is set to take place June 18th and June 25th. The Smithsonian Channel is working on a new project about the life of Jesus. Robert Powell, the man who played Christ in the 1977 miniseries, Jesus of Nazareth, will be the host of the show. Powell will meet archaeologists and scholars to gain insight about who Jesus was in ancient Rome. The network says the program will combine footage of the classic miniseries with Powell's travels and conversations. Well, that's all for Good News 360. Have a great day on purpose. Hello, welcome to Mom Talk. We are always so glad to be with you. If we haven't met, I'm Anna and my Mom Talk team is with me today. We've got Judy Hi. and Christine and Michelle. So today is an Ask a Mom segment and we asked for people to write in to us with their questions and this one is about marriage. And so this is what was asked. How do you make a marriage work when there is no communication and everything mm. is about baby? 
There is no affection or intimacy anymore. Mm -hmm. It makes me sad and I want to give up. Mm -hmm. So ladies, I can tell you that I work on a regular basis with moms of infants and preschoolers and right. this woman is not alone right. in her struggle right. and right. how she's feeling. This is right. a very serious thing for sure. Mm -hmm. So Christine, I wanted to start with you because you just have some pretty straightforward <laughs> advice for her. Well, uh, I mean, the reality is, is your marriage will not work if there's no communication and there's right. no affection. It's just not going right. to last. It's not, it's not possible. Um, so you need to do that because this is the man that you've promised to live the rest of your life with, right? Your baby right. is as adorable as they are, are going to grow up and they're going to go away. That's right. 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 And that's your, that's your job. That's, right. that's your goal as a parent is to, is to raise that kid to grow and to do mm -hmm. the things uh, on their right. own. So you need to communicate. If you're not communicating, you need to find mm -hmm. time to do that. You say, I don't have time to do that. Mm -hmm. We're all wrapped around the baby or work. You have to have time somewhere. Right. Right. Chris and I, when we were little, when our kids were little, we took, um, we took uh, vacations mm -hmm. um, and maybe you can't do that. I will tell you that it was an amazing thing. So if you mm -hmm. have the ability to do that, do get out and do that. Take, mm -hmm. take two days, three days, five days and go away. Um, or if it's not that, regular bedtimes were great for us. Our yeah, kids went structure. to bed at eight o'clock mm -hmm. and then we had that Definitely. time. Right. Together, you need that. I have a 15 year old right. and a 17 year old and I will still say to my 15 and 17 year old, go to bed. Mm -hmm. Either go right. to bed, go to your room. I don't Just care if you necessarily yeah. need to go to sleep, go read your book, go finish your homework. Right. So dad and I have some time together. Right. That's your, right. that's your main relationship. And, and I, and I know that it sounds challenging at the moment. And I pray for you that it, um, that you're able to find that time. Well, especially at the end of the night, when you're exhausted from right. all day. Communication is hard because you've been communicating all day at work if you're a spouse that works mm -hmm. or you're communicating all day with your kids that I know on my behalf, I tend to flip out on my husband then because I realize, oh, we need to communicate and I'm just tired and I'm running on coffee and right. I just can't do that anymore. <laughs> right. And so what encourages me is that, first of all, I've identified it, we need that time together. Right. And then I'm encouraged because God, he gives me that hope. If Amen. I can get the focus off of my selfish whatever, right. he provides me hope and shows me glimpses of his goodness in that angst, in that struggle, in that fight. And mm -hmm. even though the intimacy may not be where you think it should be right now, or you may not feel it, he's growing this intimacy that is getting deeper. Yes. That intimacy is getting stronger. Mm -hmm. And so that when you do get through that angst of it, you're going to be better with that. And your relationship is going to be stronger, but you have to fight for it. Fighting right. for your marriage is vital. Are you saying Vital. the intimacy with God gets deeper or the intimacy with a husband gets both. deeper? I was both. In, I was yeah. initially saying husband, but okay. of course, it, I mean, if you have that intimacy with God, mm -hmm. you're naturally going to take your eyes off of yourself then and, and sure. focus on your husband or, or your wife if you're a husband watching this. Right. But yeah. Right. Yeah, that's good. Definitely. And you were saying something about communication earlier. Right. One of the co most common misconceptions is that there's no communication. There is still communication mm -hmm. going on. It's just not good right. communication. We have to learn how to get out of our box, mm -hmm. get out of our norm, be completely selfless, and try to do things that the other person likes to do mm -hmm. to help fully open up those doors of communication and kind of create a new basis for that. Because we can't have everything focus on the baby. We've all been there, we've all done that, but you can't have everything be about the baby. You've got right. to find each other and let this be a season, like you're saying, the baby will eventually right. grow up and leave. So you have- Because marriage is needy too. Correct, exactly. So you have <laughs> yes, to find yeah, that absolutely. season. But the most important thing is that it's not hopeless. God is still with you. God is still there. You still reach out to him. It's not hopeless. And regardless of if it'll work or not, because there's no communication, God will still pull you through. I have been through the fire. Yes. I have come out with my scars, but I am still here. Yes. So right. you can still get through it and your intimacy with God will be that much stronger as long as you still rely on him. And just really quickly, this is not for women who are in an abusive relationship. Right. Correct. So if right. you are being physically or emotionally abused, right. seek help. Yes. Right. Whether it's a counselor, whether afraid. it's um, something mm -hmm. even more serious than that. These are all good things that work for Correct. healthy individuals. Yes. Right. But we want you to know that if you are struggling in an abusive marriage, mm -hmm. seek help. Right. Please do that. 
Yeah, Please don't do that for yourself. Yes, I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you took the time to mention that. It's so important for sure. Right. And I want to say too that counseling is not just for abusive marriages, yep. but it's just for, it's for healthy ones it's too. It's for healthy marriages Absolutely. too. And it's so important to get in there when the problems are still Starting small. Yes. Because mm -hmm. you can say, oh, well, you know, this is like normal mm -hmm. and it's just small. Correct. But mm -hmm. those weeds can multiply and Correct. grow into yeah. many more. Um, I wanted to comment about the communication thing yeah. and how it is easier once the kids are in bed. It's tempting to just yes. watch TV or get on Facebook <laughs> because that's not stressful. It doesn't right. require work and we've yeah. been working yeah. all day. But the reality is, is that over time, those walls and the distance get bigger and bigger, get bigger and, bigger mm. and that, that intimacy it just continues to um, grow that much if more. If you need help too, there are services like where you can get a date box shipped to your door yes, that you they plan those. the yes. whole thing for yes. you and you don't have to do any of that. Or go just, anywhere. The you kids are in bed, yes. you right. stay at home. So I want to make sure before it. the end of our segment that I do want to tell you that there is hope even if your marriage feels right. dead, God can bring a hopeless marriage back to life. Yes. Yeah. He has a story written just for you and your husband. Absolutely. You would need each other to be able to fully walk in God's plan for your life because you have become one in your marriage. And so sometimes women think I'm educated, I'm independent, I don't need him, but you do. To yes. live out your God story, you need him by your side. So keep fighting, fight for your marriage. Yes. It is absolutely mm -hmm worth it. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. We pray for marriages. We know they're under attack and we have hope. Now, that being said, the Real Life team will be back after this break to pray over prayer requests. If you would like prayer for your marriage, call in. The number is 888-665-4483. Someone will pray with you. Stay mm -hmm. tuned. We'll be right back to pray. Mom, don't forget to pick me up at school right at 3.30, okay? I have to go to Amy's to study before soccer practice. Oh. And don't forget to pick up my dress from the dry cleaners I need tomorrow. Thanks, Mom. You know, being best mom is a full-time job, in addition to the one I already have. It's in these rare moments of me time that I'm so thankful that Cornerstone is here. Cornerstone ministers to me with the programming that feeds both my heart and soul that teaches me how to be the best me and the best mom I can be. And it's all right there, 24 hours a day, seven days a week at the touch of my remote control. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for your peace. We pray for your deliverance in Jesus' name. There are very few moments when I can invest in myself, but it's nice to know that when I can, I can watch a network that cares for me. With their round-the-clock prayer line and biblically-based outlook, it's easy to see what sets Cornerstone apart. That's Cornerstone, and that's the difference. This summer, it's a blast from the past. Join us June 16th on the Signal Hill stage for a special Jesus People concert featuring Randy Stonehill. Everyone's a homeless child. Honey Tree. It's because I got this spirit inside. And Cornerstone's own music group, Jubilee. Journey back to the 70s with us as we worship our God Go to SignalHillStage.com to get your free ticket now. It's going to be fun on Friday, so if you can come Friday at 7 o'clock, be around 6 o'clock. Parking's going to be a challenge. I know it's going to be a challenge, but we're looking forward to seeing you. We're going to have a good time. Every day we look at a scripture together. Let's do that right now. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8 and verse 11. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive, and he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more Will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? Boy, that's so important. You know, maybe you're not a father or a mother. You know, we were talking earlier about that transition. But everybody understands that every father wants to do the best with their children. Every father. But God is the best father. He will not withhold anything good from His own. His resources are unlimited. His power is unstoppable. And His love is unconditional. 
Allow him to be the father that you need. You know, we need him as our father. We're created with that vacuum in us that needs our daddy to fill it. Place all of your hope, all of your trust, and all of your strength in our good father, Amen. our daddy today. And I guarantee you that we won't be disappointed. He's a father who doesn't leave us. Right. He's a father who doesn't say and tease us and say, if you do this, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. He is a giving, loving father that we can't fully understand, but we can comprehend it through his spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I'm so thankful for God as our father. Right. Mm -hmm. He's the good one. He Amy. is so faithful. I mean, if you think about that, whoever asks receives from him. Now, so I just was out with my boys, and boys don't ask for a lot like girls do. Right. You know, they yeah. clothes, makeup, yeah. hair. Yeah. They're pretty simple. And the one says, Mom, I need new soccer shoes. Are you kidding? I'm on it. I'm That's like, right. I'm, we are going to get the best soccer shoes That's that right. the whole city's ever seen. And one needs new shorts. It's like, I, there's... There's something in us naturally that wants to give right. to our children. And, and it's the nature of our Heavenly Father. Yeah. He wants to mm -hmm. give us good things. Not spoilers. I mean, hopefully we're grateful and thankful right. and appreciative. And, and, but there's something in Him that wants to give to us and bless Amen. us. That's right. So don't be afraid to ask big from God. That mm -hmm. transition from being God, God, to being my daddy. Yeah. I mean, that's what really Christianity is really is, is God making us his kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. Relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. you, have a, you have a personal relationship with him. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, and despite whatever transition we're in, whether we are the empty nesters or um, we are or the new. the full nesters. Yeah, full <laughs> nesters. <laughs> oh, or the new mom. Yeah. Yeah. New dad. Yeah. It just reminds us that if when we seek God, that he is, as our Abba Father, always wants to supply and provide for, for our requests. Yeah. Whatever that may be. Okay. <laughs> so I have a question. So now that your kids are grown and older, do you still want to give to them? Or are you like, I'm done. Thank no, God, no, we made it. It, it. When they come home, and they yeah, when, <laughs> they yeah, they need it. <laughs> when our older ones come home, we have a little shopping trip because, right. you yeah. know, they don't wash their clothes the way they should, so they fall <laughs> apart or <laughs> shoes have holes in them and yeah, they don't yeah. want to spend their money. So oh, they exactly. Mom. So, yeah, you do. You still have right. that desire. But I think the difference between me and God is if my kids have misbehaved, I'm not also always so willing to go <laughs> shop exactly. with them. Yeah. And God's always there for us. So that's, that's where I find my hope is, thank goodness he doesn't just give me what I de everything deserve. I for, right, everything right. I ask for. Okay, so but right. how, how does it make you feel when your child, your son, your daughter comes up to you and just wants to be with you? You know, just wants to hang out with you. Maybe yeah. watch a movie together. Oh. Just something fun together. Mm, yeah. Isn't that there's, wonderful? There's, there's nothing better than that. Yeah. When they're not nothing asking better. for anything. Exactly. That's right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They just want to be with you. They just want to hang out. Do you know? You, yeah. oh, you feel that? Judah goes, Mommy, 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 Mommy. I love you, love you. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just a melted right. mush yeah. pot. That's right. And, and, and I know, you know what? And this is a good point. We don't go to God just to ask That's and right. demand things of right. him. I think though more people feel undeserving to go before God and ask him for things than not. But I mean, it, just be with him. Don't don't go with gimme give gimme give gimme. Give go with thank you thank you thank you. Exactly. That's the key. That I believe is. that's the key right. to that relationship mm -hmm. with the Father, is to go and just be in His presence, just Absolutely. to hang out with Him. Yeah. People have called us for prayer, and Terry, I've given you a couple that are in regards to marriage. We want to pray pray yeah. for them. Yeah, uh -huh. we have Tony, he and his wife Vicky. They're asking for prayer for their marriage, and that they have some bitterness and resentment, pride and strife, and so we need to have prayer for them. And Amy, you've got an email. I have a, a praise report from Elizabeth who lives in Christ Church in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. She said, I'm thanking God for healing my son of alcohol addiction. Wow. And I am so That's excited great. and so rejoicing with you. That is the kind of God we serve that Amen. helps us. Yes, he sure does. And you know, God cares about all of the things in our lives. You know, he, he's engaged in all of the things in our lives. And I find this interesting that three people called today that all call for the same thing, healing for their pets. Aww. Healing for their pets, healing for their pet dog, healing for their, their dog Prince. And we, we believe God. We believe the Lord cares about our pets. 
He said, boy, your God is all over the place. Yeah, he is all over the place. Yeah. And yes, he right. cares about us. And he knows about, if he knows about the hair on our heads, then he knows about our pets. Right. And if we, uh, if we pray, he'll, he'll help our pets. I believe that, you know, that's, that's not a, that's not sacrilegious, you know. He cares, he cares about for us. Sure he yes, cares he for us. Yes, he does. And, you know, he really cares for um, folks who have birthdays today. Well, just, a minute, well. just a minute. Just a minute. Let's pray. Put, put, Are we going to pray? No, just a minute. Wait, put, we're going to pray for We got to pray. Yeah, okay. we're going to pray. I'm Lord, sorry, we yes, thank you, pray. Lord, I'm so glad to pray. for your love. Mm -hmm. We thank you for your care, yes, Lord. Lord. We thank you, God, that you're our daddy. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father, that there's nothing we can't come to you and talk to you about. Yes, Lord. Lord, there's no time that you aren't willing to receive us. We don't have to set an appointment with you and get on your calendar, Lord. We can just come to you in, in the spirit at any time. Thank you for that, Lord. I pray for every one of these needs and we put our faith together, Lord. Touch the hearts, touch the lives. Lord, we pray for the pets. Lord, let these, help these pets to have health in their bodies, Father. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. And now oh, it's time nice. for the Marianne birthday Lord. girl. Yay. Happy <laughs> we got a cake. Ready? One, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Amy. They blow yes. out the candle, but it's, that's gonna be hard does that actually say your name? It's oh, oh, wow. It's amazing. I thought it was like leftover from last week. No, it's, <laughs> it's got your name on it. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> Holy <laughs> mackerel. That's, so that's nice. That you shows God. you how much yes. we love you and how mm -hmm. important we you do. are to us. Oh, thank the cake's you. got your name on it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> And you're, you're, you're important to us. You're part of the family. You're part of our Cornerstone clan, and we're so glad that you are. We're glad you watch real life every day. We, we walk down this path together. We, we look at God's word. We hear testimonies. We hear music, and we just enjoy fellowshipping with each other as we fellowship with the Lord. That's what this show's all about, because Jesus promised in John that I've come that you would have life and have it more abundantly. That's what we call real life. That's why the program's called Real Life. We want to walk down that path that Jesus has carved out for us that's full and abundant and meaningful, that lives a life of destiny. We want you to join us on this journey. We do it every day, and we'll see you tomorrow on Real Life. Want a way to share Bible verses, inspirational photos, or uplifting videos with your friends and family online? Like the Cornerstone Television page on Facebook. Every day we'll keep you updated on show info, behind the scenes facts, and daily inspiration from our exclusive photos, videos, quotes, and more. Go to facebook.com slash cornerstone television to connect with us. We want to hear from you. Let's spread the good news of Jesus to our family and friends online. You may have heard people on Cornerstone mention Roku, but what is it? Roku is a device that connects to your television and streams thousands of channels from all around the world, including CTVN. You can watch your favorite Cornerstone shows 24-7, anywhere from around the world. Roku is helping us take the gospel as far as possible and as quickly as possible. For more information on how to connect with us on Roku, go to ctvn.org slash Roku. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.